Hello and welcome. My name is Chris Can with Mining Journal and Mining Magazine. And with me, I have Eric Spedland, Senior Zero Emissions Manager with EpiRock. And this is part of our ESG special. Today, Eric and I are going to be discussing the process uh, and the progress of the industry uh, toward an electric mine and the coordination of electric mining technology with broader sustainability initiatives. Welcome, Eric. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. Great to have you. First question that we had for you, does the sustainable mine of the future, does that necessarily in your head always look like an all electric mine? I think it's it's pretty clear for, for everyone that the, the mine of the future or the, the sustainable mine will be a, an electric mine and in electric in many ways. So we, we're talking both the, the, um, an electric mine in the machines, so how the machines are powered, but also uh, in uh, everything else, uh, mo all energy consumption needed is going to be electric, uh, well, al almost all at least. And um, uh, that's going to be electric, but it's also going to be powered by renewable energy. So these things need to go hand in hand. Electric energy is the, the cleanest form of energy we have that we can use in the, or the most things in the most ways. Um, but it needs to come also from renewable sources. And I think that's, that's kind of two parallel uh, revolutions that we will see in the, in the coming decade. Okay. Well, what are the challenges there that you see, Eric? Uh, obviously, there's some restrictions in terms of getting a renewable grid up and running for miners to tap into, especially in, in remote areas. Uh, and, we, and we're aware of some uh, concerns or some challenges around uh, heavy haul and electric or hybrid um, vehicles as well. Where do you see the key challenges and, and, and also obviously the path to those solutions? I mean, this is, uh, the challenges are enormous, but the outcome of the benefits of it is also enormous. If we can get away from fossil fuels, there is so much savings in, in so many ways, but also an added value to the end the product. So, so I, I see this, this kind of, this is the direction we're going to go anyway. Um, also, um, I mean, you, you mentioned remote sites. Remote sites normally generally powered by diesel generators. Uh, but remote sites also normally has a lot of land, normally has many, many sites has a lot of sun. Uh, many sites are, have a lot of wind. And... Uh, Renewable energy is already the cheapest form of energy in most cases, uh, most cases, most parts of the world. So installing, I mean, having cheap uh, access to cheap electricity has, or energy has always been key for, for mining because we're big energy consumers. But uh, it's not been possible really to, to refine your own oil and so on. But now it has become, now it's fully possible to produce your own electricity and um, so, on. so we saw, see more and more mining projects actually announcing enormous solar installations at site because they are remote. Uh, actually, they, their business case is so much better. If you're powering your, your mine from a diesel genset, uh, roughly your, your cost of electricity is uh, uh, 50 cents, euro, dollar cents per kilowatt hour. Renewable energy is below uh, 10 cents. So it is, it's, it's just a natural step, but we have to think differently. We cannot continue with just seeing our, our business as only being uh, mining or uh, so on. And I think it, we have to rethink how we power our minds for sure. And, but it's, it's not only going to be uh, uh, the smart thing to do, it's going to be the right thing to do and uh, most, the most cost efficient. Okay. And in terms of Epiroc at the moment, obviously we discussed off air, the fact that, um, that you now have zero emissions in, in your job title. In terms of the investment dollars that you're in charge of at EpiRock, where, where's most of the money going at the moment? Where do you see as the real benefits in terms of delivering new technologies that will help miners make this transition? 3% of EpiRock's revenue goes into our R&D, so it's quite a, a considerable part. Uh, but uh, and, and, and a lot of the, that money is focused on uh, making electric machines, zero emission machines that can enable then the use of renewable energy. 
So an, an electric machine is not cleaner than the energy you put to it. So, but from an OEM's perspective, our responsibility is to make sure we can offer machines that can be powered by renewable energy. And then from a mining perspective, the mine have to secure the access to renewable energy for to, to minimize the, the carbon footprint. There are of course a lot of other benefits with a, a battery electric machine, for example, in the underground, but the, it is uh, mainly related around about uh, uh, safety and health, uh, uh, no tailpipe emissions locally. You know, the, if we are running these machines in a confined area, the ventilation is a, a very problematic and very costly in underground mining. The deeper we go, the more costly it, it gets. So. Um, the uh, zero emission and uh, battery electric machines becomes more and more profitable, smart, the right thing to do, the deeper you go. So the business case is stronger with depth uh, and it increases all the time. And um, so we will see, just because of that, we will see mines go towards that. But uh, to get the lowest carbon footprint, we also need renewable energy. But that is another industry, another sector. Uh, so, so, but from a mining company, you have to balance these kind of investments. Okay, um, and the electric equipment market, um, the industry almost in, a, in in itself has come a long way in the past decade. What's been the most exciting innovation and breakthrough from a an electric equipment perspective for the mining industry um, that you guys have been working on potentially in, you know, in the past? year 18 months or, or that you're looking to release in the next year or 18 months if you uh, can talk about I, I cannot spoil anything but uh, I, what we said for, from what officially said that eprock aims to have a full electric offering for for the underground uh, market by 2025 so there depending on on what size mine and so on you are in there should be an a, an electric offering that you you can uh, choose but the um, uh, the biggest change, I think, from from let's almost say the last decade, is how the technology has matured. And it's not so much mature the technology itself, uh, but the access to components, because more and more manufacturers actually produce something that you you know electric motors and uh, uh, parts of drive lines and so on, not necessarily something that the the OEMs necessarily do in house. Uh, so access to components, access to um, knowledge, because uh, our, our industry is used to building decent machines. And uh, the, the, uh, there is no one that you can go out and just hire and ask and say, oh, do you have a good 10-year experience in battery electric drive lines for the mi underground mining machines? There is no one like that because this is new technology. So we have to learn as an industry and develop our own competence in-house on this area uh, and uh, I think that kind of maturity is the biggest steps that has happened uh, and what we see now is is the rollout of, of um, uh, real rollout of the technology and what we'll see coming in the in the next um, let's say up to 2030 is the adoption of this so uh, it is, we have matured the technology and the adoption is now rapidly coming. Eric Svedland with Epiroth. That's all we've got time for. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me.